Federal eviction moratoriums in response to the COVID-19 pandemic. Updated January 26, 2021. On September 4, 2020, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, CDC, imposed a nationwide temporary federal moratorium on residential evictions due to non-payment of rent. The stated purpose of the order is preventing the further spread of coronavirus disease 2019 COVID-19, specifically by preventing homelessness and overcrowded housing conditions resulting from eviction. The action, which followed an executive order directing the CDC to consider such a measure, is unprecedented, both in terms of the federal reach into what is traditionally state and local governance of landlord-tenant law and its use of a public health authority for this purpose. The national eviction moratorium took effect less than two weeks after the expiration of a different and narrower set of eviction protections established by the CARES Act, Section 4024. This insight compares the two eviction moratoriums across several key features and ends with a review of implementation issues raised by the CDC moratorium. Key Features Time Period The CARES Act eviction moratorium began on March 27, 2020 and ended on July 24, 2020. Covered tenants could not be forced to vacate until 30 days after the expiration of the moratorium, August 23, 2020. The national eviction moratorium issued by CDC took effect September 4, 2020, and was initially slated to extend through December 31, 2020, but was extended legislatively through January 31, 2021. On January 20, 2021, CDC announced its intent to extend the existing eviction moratorium order through March 31, 2021. It does not address notices to vacate. Coverage. The CARES Act eviction moratorium applied to federally related properties, which the Act defined as properties participating in federal assistance programs or with federally backed financing. Researchers estimate the CARES Act eviction moratorium applied to between 28% and 46% of occupied rental units nationally. The CDC eviction moratorium applies to all renters who attest to meeting income and other eligibility criteria set out in the order, which include having made all efforts to obtain government assistance for rent and being at risk of homelessness or overcrowded housing conditions upon eviction. Renters must assert their right to protection under the order by submitting a signed declaration of eligibility to their landlords, attachment of the order. The CDC moratorium does not supersede more protective state and local government eviction protections. Cause. The CARES Act eviction moratorium prohibited landlords from initiating eviction proceedings against a covered tenant for the non-payment of rent and related fees. The CDC eviction moratorium prohibits evictions for non-payment of rent and related fees. Fees, penalties, and back rent. The CARES Act eviction moratorium prohibited landlords from charging fees or penalties for unpaid rent during the period of the moratorium. The law did not forgive unpaid rent amounts. The CDC eviction moratorium does not prohibit landlords from charging fees or penalties for unpaid rent. Like the CARES Act, it does not forgive unpaid rent amounts. Enforcement. The CARES Act eviction moratorium did not include any penalties for noncompliance or other provisions related to enforcement. The CDC eviction moratorium contains several provisions related to enforcement, including potential penalties for landlords that violate the order and potential penalty of perjury for tenants who falsely declare their eligibility. Implementation. The CDC eviction moratorium raises a number of questions that may continue to be at issue while the moratorium is in effect. The legality of the order. Several legal challenges to the CDC's action were filed in federal court. As of the date of this insight, one case had been dismissed with prejudice by agreement of the parties and preliminary injunctions had been denied in two others. How the order will be enforced. Under state and local laws, contested evictions generally must be approved by local courts and any ambiguities in the CDC order are to be resolved by those courts. Press accounts suggest that courts across the country have begun to interpret the CDC eviction order's applicability, protections, and requirements. State court systems in Texas, Maryland, and Michigan, for example, have issued orders or guidance related to the CDC moratorium applicable in those states. On October 9, 2020, the administration released additional guidance about the eviction moratorium. It states that the order does not preclude a landlord from challenging the truthfulness of a tenant's declaration in court and is not intended to prevent landlords from starting eviction proceedings, although actual evictions are prohibited while the order is in effect. Will the order be effective in stopping evictions, particularly if tenants are unaware of the order or if there is confusion among courts, tenants, and landlords about if or how it applies? 
Since the CDC eviction moratorium has been in place, news articles report that evictions have continued, with landlords raising lease violations or lease expiration as grounds for eviction rather than non-payment of rent, and that some tenants have been found not to have met the requirements of the order. It is unclear whether the potentially applicable penalties for violations of the CDC order have affected landlord decisions to pursue evictions and tenant decisions to pursue protections. What are the implications of the moratorium, for both landlords, who are owed significant back rent, and for tenants, who owe rent and could face eviction when the moratorium ends? Prior to release of the CDC order, the Aspen Institute, using data from census and other sources, estimated that 13 million to 17 million renter households, or 29% to 43% of all renter households, were at risk of eviction by the end of 2020 due to COVID-19-related job loss and economic hardship. Different estimates of the amount of unpaid rent that will have accrued by the end of 2020 ranged from $25 billion to $70 billion. While the CARES Act provided funding that some states and localities have used to assist renters, there have been calls from both tenant advocates and landlord and housing organizations for financial relief to assist either or both tenants and landlords in covering the backlog of unpaid rent and prevent future evictions. The Fiscal Year 2021 Consolidated Appropriations Act, in addition to extending the eviction moratorium, Division N, Section 502, included $25 billion for states and localities to fund emergency rental assistance, Division N, Section 501. Author Information, Maggie McCarty, Specialist in Housing Policy, Libby Pearl, Specialist in Housing Policy, 